What makes a great comic premise? A great comic premise. In, in a way, uh, I, I don't want to say it has to be this because in reality, uh, if you have an idea and you write it out and it works, that, that premise was great for you. It's so it's not something that's objective. It's something that's subjective. It's something that, that creates a desire in you to tell the entire story. I mean, haven't you ever seen a, a blurb for a movie and you said, I wish I had thought of that. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for something to stir your own imagination so that the, the story is, is kind of exploding in your own imagination before you even can get to the, the, the typewriter or the, uh, the computer. Uh, so, uh, so for me, uh, it's very subjective. I think what, what some things that are common to great comic objectives is the, the, the big lie. That there's some impossible or improbable thing that could never happen or could probably never happen. But since it does happen, it affects this main character and these other um, supporting characters. And you wonder, well, what will happen then? So, so when you create a comic premise, um, the, the, the better the premise is, the better it is a tool to excite your own imagination, to, to, make you go, oh my God, I, I, I got to write this down because it's, it's, it's already occurring to you in your, in your, in your own imagination, in your, in your own head. Um, there are a couple of things that you want to think about uh, as you develop it. You want to tell one lie and one lie only. So, so in other words, um, let's say your uh, comic premise is that there's this... Uh, there's this anthropomorphic duck, right? Or chicken. There's this anthropomorphic chicken, this little chicken. And the chicken thinks that the sky is falling. And he made a big deal about it. And it turned out the sky wasn't falling. And so he's embarrassed his father and he's embarrassed himself and he's humiliated himself at a time of life in which chickens don't want to humiliate themselves, middle school. Now that's the premise of Chicken Little, the Disney movie. In the middle of Chicken Little, there's an alien invasion. Okay. I would say that maybe you don't need the alien invasion. That maybe you need, if you didn't think your story of in an, a humiliated chicken trying to, you know, dig out from under the humiliation in middle school was enough of a story, then you wanted to come up with a different premise. You wanted to create something differently. Um, so that it would propel you to the end of the story. If you're throwing in an alien invasion, you're telling me you're all uh, right away, well, this idea wasn't good enough. It wasn't strong enough to, to sustain. Um, the Pixar movie Inside Out. The Pixar movie Inside Out had a great premise. The premise is, is that all these different aspects of our personality, they, they all have, they, they're all alive in our brains. And uh, what happens is, is that two of them somehow get shunted off to, uh, to another, another region and the little girl whose brain it is starts going amok and they got to get back. Wow, that's a, that's a great premise. Now, could that ever happen? I don't know. Are there little people in our brains telling us what to do? It's an interesting idea. So what would happen then? Now, the premise is only the start because you have to, you have to people, you have to develop the premise through character and theme. Because ultimately, even though it's a movie about a guy who wakes up, it's the same day every day, or a guy, or a guy who, kid who wishes he was big and he wakes up and he's a 30 year old man, or a bunch of uh, uh, personalized entities in some little girl's brain, what is it about? And when, when somebody asks you what it's about, they're not asking you, what's the premise? They're asking you, what's the meaning? Why am I spending two hours watching this? And who are the characters that are happening to? Because you have to develop 
the premise through character as opposed to, well, now I'm going to make the characters do this. Now I'm going to make the characters do, do that. What would the characters do given this premise guided by the theme? So Inside Out is a, is a great story uh, because I think for two years, and again, somebody on the internet will correct me on that. Uh, I think for two years, they, the, if you know Inside Out, um, uh, Amy Poehler played Joy, and uh, I forget the name of the actress, I think something Smith, Lois Smith maybe, played Sadness. And as you know, Lo, you know Joy and Sadness go on a trip. But for the first two years, it was Joy and Fear, Amy Poehler and Bill Hader, and the movie didn't work. The movie didn't work because no matter what they did, they had funny stuff happen, but it just was not, not coalescing because when they went back, and I think they had child psychologists and neuro, neuro, neuroscientists come to talk to them, they realized that the opposite of joy isn't fear. The opposite of joy is sadness, and you can't have joy without sadness, which is the theme that you have to be, to be a fully actualized person, you need all parts of yourself. You can't just dismiss one part. And it didn't work with fear. So when they finally got the idea, we have to, we've, we've got the wrong characters on this journey, then the movie, then the movie kind of found its way and, 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 and took off. So uh, a comic premise is some impossible, you know, in, in, in the Comic Heroes Journey book, I call it WTF, what the fuck? Something, something happens that, that is either impossible, a guy wakes up the same day over and over again, that's impossible, or improbable. Um, a, a, a woman decides to go to uh, her best friend's wedding in order to uh, destroy it. Is it. Could that happen? Sure, but uh, you know, mostly you're you're you know, if you if somebody's got, if some guy's getting married and you think, well, I should have married him, uh, maybe you just stay home and drink that weekend. Um, <laughs> so impossible or improbable, and then who are the characters that are called on? Characters are called on either through need or theme. You need a character in Groundhog Day. You need a cameraman because how is he going to do a remote if nobody's holding the camera? But then you also have characters brought on through theme. Ultimately, Groundhog Day is about how can you be a good person in the world? And so you needed the world. And so they, they said it uh, because Groundhog Day happens in a small town. That small town becomes the world. And those are the old, other than the station manager in the very beginning of the picture that we never see again, the only other characters are his producer, the, the, the love interest, you know, the magical object of desire, uh, and everybody else in the town. Uh, because you know who's not in Groundhog Day? The President of the United States, because it has nothing to do with politics. His mother, because it doesn't really have anything to do with family. Or Stephanie. If you Google Groundhog Day, what will come up in, the, in, the, uh, in Google, very, very top of the list, is the second draft done by Harold uh, Ramis and Danny Rubin. And in that second draft, there's this character called Stephanie, which, which was a response to a executive uh, note saying, how does this happen? I don't believe, I, I don't know how it happens. You got to put, the audience will be confused. The audience will be confused. You have to put something in there that explains to them how it happens. So Harold Ramis put in, against his better judgment, he put in um, the character of Stephanie, who's into Ouija boards and crystals, and, and she was dumped by Bill Murray's character, and so she puts a curse on him. So think about it. Groundhog Day, if you know Groundhog Day, if you don't know Groundhog Day, go watch it. It's really a wonderful film, even though it's many, many years old. Um, character of Stephanie. Well, if she puts a curse on him, then don't you have to go back and get her to take the curse off? And 
And then doesn't that diminish the theme to be, as opposed to how can you be a good person in the world, to be how could you be a good boyfriend? Kind of diminishes it. So when the people who ran the studio were all fired and a new executive came in, uh, the guy said, what do you need this character of Stephanie for? A recorded instance of a good executive note. And so they took it out because they never wanted it in the first place. Could Groundhog Day worked if Rita had been the arrogant, selfish one and uh, the Bill Murray character, Phil, was it? Yeah. Uh, had been this kind, sort of gentle man. Could it still have been funny? What if we switched, what if we took the, the two characters and switched their roles? Well, but who's, who's waking up the same day over and over again? That's a good point. Okay, what you if see, it, if it yeah. if it's if it's still him, then why are we torturing this nice guy? Okay, what if it was Rita? Well, then that would that would work if she was somebody who needed to go on the journey. You don't want to pull wings off of flies. You don't want to torture characters who don't need transformation. Don't need torturing. Characters who go through trauma need to go through the trauma. Thank God for the trauma because the trauma helps them transform. So if they don't need the trauma, then you're just, you're just torturing somebody for really no good, not a great reason.